as we think about calving season and, and whether it be spring or fall, one of the things we want to focus on is when can we start to intervene with these calves to stimulate the immune system. The earlier we can stimulate the immune system, the sooner we're preparing them as they start to move through the production cycles. Now, it's always been thought that if we vaccinate too early, we may have interference with some maternal antibodies. So a lot of research that's out there now would indicate that even though that calf's immune system is extremely young, it's naive, but it's functional. So the older that calf gets, the stronger the immune system is going to get. Working with your veterinarian to help determine when are some pressures that, that you see within your herd will really help you determine at what time frame you may want to start intervening with some of these vaccines. One of the key things we focus on is going to be respiratory disease. And we know that if we utilize some of these new technologies like intranasal vaccines, that we're able to really stimulate the immune system in such a manner that we get around some of the interference that we've always been concerned about with maternal antibodies. So one of the things that we focus on with products like Bovillus Nasal Gen 3 PMH, we put it into these calves at a young age. We can go as early as seven days of age if necessary. We stimulate the immune system against IBR, VRSV, PI3, as well as Mannheimia hemolytica and uh, Pasharella multocida. But what we do is we stimulate it, we create memory, we create a local immune response, but we also create a systemic response. As we think about the intranasal vaccines, an additional aspect of it, it does leave one needle out of the animal. As we focus on BQA techniques, anything that we can do to, to increase the wholesomeness, increase the product that we're producing in the industry is a benefit for everybody. What we look at in the fall, especially in a spring calving herd, we need to focus on things that are going to help protect that pregnancy in the late stages of gestation. If those cows haven't been vaccinated in the spring, it's an opportunity for us to put respiratory vaccines in as well as, as the reproductive vaccines. If they were vaccinated in the spring, it's a great opportunity to get boosters in. Killed vaccines can be utilized anytime with safety in, the, in your cow herd. Modified live vaccines can be utilized safely if they've been set up appropriately. Modified live vaccines need to be utilized in cows that have been vaccinated within the last 12 months with the modified live vaccines. As we can see, IBR, BVD cause some issues with, with late-term gestation in these animals. As we think about calf scars, calf scar is truly one of those management diseases that we deal with in the industry. We think about the environment that we're calving in, the number of animals that, are, that we see within that calving facility, uh, all of these are things that can increase the challenge level of pathogens that we're worried about. As we think about scour diseases, uh, rotavirus, coronavirus, uh, Clostridium perfringens type C and D, E. coli K99 are pretty common pathogens that we see. So there's approaches that we can take to try to one, reduce the challenge through management schemes, but then we can also in include vaccination to try to help stimulate antibody production, whether it be in the cow or after calving in the calf, that can help protect against those bugs. And timing becomes the critical key there because we need to make sure we're putting these products in prior to colostrum being developed, but also at the same time, uh, we want it to be close enough that we have a peak, we, we kind of peak out with our antibody titers so we can dump as much antibody into the colostrum, which is the key driver in, in giving us protection against these pathogens. So products like Bovillus Guardian is a product that, that we utilize in the pre-calving stages to stimulate antibody production in that cow that will then be dumped into the colostrum. We need to make sure those calves are taking in colostrum that they're up, they have a desire, they have an ability to nurse. A couple quarts within the first couple hours, really like to have a gallon into these animals within the first 12 to 24 hours. One of the things we need to focus now on is how do we build on things that we may have done earlier in the spring to help prepare these animals for this time of year. It's been well documented that anything that we can do to these animals vaccination wise at times of low stress we're going to see added benefit. Stress reduces the immune system, has a negative impact, so things that we can do at a low time of stress will benefit us most. A lot of different preconditioned programs available. Preconditioned programs like PrimeVac that Merck Animal Health has lays out programs and strategies to try to prepare these animals as they move through the cycles. As we think about preconditioned programs, one of the key factors really focuses around weaning. If we can have an animal that's been weaned 45 to 60 days, these are animals that buyers see value in. They buy these animals, they don't get sick, 
they don't treat near as many animals and they just move through the production cycles. It's a way to add value, it's a way to increase the value of your animals as you move to sell them this fall. As we focus on pink eye and beef calves, uh, again it comes back to being a management type of uh, disease as well. We call it the three-legged stool. We've got multiple factors we need to address to try to reduce the effects of pink eye and the prevalence of pink eye within a herd. Environmental factors such as tall grass, we're at that time frame where we have a lot of our grasses that have headed out. Uh, cattle are grazing low to the ground as grass quality is dropping off. Irritation to the eyes from these, from these structures, these grass uh, seeds can start to cause damage to the cornea that really starts the process we think about with pink eye. Flies this time of year are bad as well. Face flies move from animal to animal, transmit the bacteria, more XL bovis and more XL bovoculi, as well as some of the mycoplasmas that we see associated with pink eye. It also has negative effects on performance as we see reduced grazing tendencies in these animals. But another key factor is it creates pain. When we see animals that are squinting, that they have drainage from their eye, we need to address those early. It may be associated with a pink eye, it may be associated with a foreign body, but making sure what we're dealing with becomes critical. As we focus on any herd vaccination program, again I stress work with your veterinarian to develop these programs, but then keep good records. Merck Animal Health has recently released a new uh, online based program called Herd Health Manager. It's a tool that we can utilize with your veterinarian and work with your veterinarian to set up protocols, to look at products that are available to fit into those protocols that you're going to utilize. It also creates an opportunity for us to create a record that talks about the dates that we gave these products, uh, when we're going to give the products in the future to try to set up the, the best management plan to fit into preconditioning programs if that's the approach we're going to market it. Herd Health Manager ties in prime back to where we can create uh, certificates that your veterinarian can sign that you can take to the sale barn on sale day with you to help document what took place. It also creates opportunities for us to, to input information such as serial numbers that be can become extremely important uh, as we start to look at, at the history of these animals and just the basic records that we need to keep behind them. So herdhealthmanager.com, sign up in less than a minute and work with your veterinarian to set up protocols for your, for your beef herds.